Welcome, this is a video about haplogroup D, E. Q, C and R have their root, roots, cradles in the Americas and they are what we already got covered in other videos. A and B are typical for Africa, so we include them, but I claim they are out of Americas but that is not the subject of this video. In the background you will perceive the decades-long discussion between consensus and scientists whether if E and D are Asian or African. These discussions, in my opinion, are full of paradigms which I consider a severe problem. These five groups Q, C, R and A, B cover over 80% of the mosaic of all modern humans. Adding A and B did not make a lot of difference. Adding E would much more but we still have to find out if it's African or not. Um, I could sound confused but please see this as a kind of a complimentary video. That could be so because I will enter certain approaches and info that are not my favorite ones because they do not present graphically because they hold too many paradigms. I would prefer if what you see is what it is. That's what I try to do in the videos. I will try to convince you, the spectator, that D is not African but Asian or rather American. That's because of my hi hypothesis of out of America, out of the Americas. And I will try to convince you that E, the supposed descendant of D, D, E, wraps and pushed back A and B that are typical African. So this is a frequency of E. L don't let this D, E confuse you. It's about E. Y DNA E. So I don't show A and B at this point, but this is 60 to 80 percent is the dark purple, and you can notice that E, this is E, is um, covers much more of Africa than A and certainly B do. I, I guess it's about 10 times more. So that's a paradigm because Africa is uh, A, B and well at least I consider it a paradigm. Uh, e should not be much more present than A and B. There's much more paradigm in this, in, in this because why is it on the facades why is E on the facades? Why DNA D? The frequency below, I will show it in a minute. This is D, D. Why DNA D? What I showed you was the frequency map. First, this part is nothing in Africa. It appears in Tibet, uh, Tibet, Altai, Japan, Korea, Tibet, Altai, Japan, Korea. That has nothing to do with Africa. Then, from other sources, we will learn that it's present in the Caribbean, 
and amongst Afri Amer Afro Americans. Um, I suppose that I can say that Afri Afro Americans have black skin. So now about this map. This is the Y. This is the mosaic. This is the world map of the dominant Y DNA haplogroups. And here below you will see tree, etc. That is tree Y DNA Adam A B D E C E, and then it goes on, and then it terminates with P uh, Q R, because that's where we will need to get uh, uh, Q is in the Americas, uh, almost 100 percent. R is Western European and Western Eurasia, so we will have to get there from Africa, A. This is A, this is a bit of A, and B here in the middle. We will have to get uh, to this Q in the Americas and to um, or in Western Eurasia. This presents a number of paradigms, sequence after DE. So why is it uh, not before DE? Well, I think that C is not in Africa. For instance, here in this picture, you can see that C is in Australia. For example, it's in the Americas, it's in Asia, and it's not in Africa, so that is kind of a paradigm. Further, C has its root in the Americas. That's another very strong paradigm. Other pi paradigm is that Neanderthal fraction that sub-Saharan Africa does not present. How does it get from is A, B or D, E or C, E into the rest of the world? Um, so that's another paradigm. Okay. So this is what we see. This is D. It is supposedly connected with E. You see, it's not in Africa. Africa, it's clear, it's white. And E is in Africa and is not where D is. D is mostly here in Tibet and Japan. And Andaman. Andaman is pretty much here. Here is Andaman, small island, so it's here. Andaman is under the word, the letter O of mere migration. So, but they still connect them, because that solves one of the paradigms. Why, where do this DE come from? So, D being in Asia. Tibet, Japan, Altai, Andaman, and E being in Africa, and not in the center of Africa, and much more in northern Africa than in sub-Saharan Africa, which would be more or less below this line. And in some way I think I can say this is almost Middle East, and here it's really effectively Middle East. This is quite some paradigms. So this is the Andaman Islands and this is a river that is very strategical. Uh, I forgot her name but this is uh, major rivers tributaries in the Tibetan Plateau. This is the Tibetan Plateau. And this river 
is the one that connects best with the Andaman Islands. Um, I will later talk about these currents because I will claim they come from the Americas, South America, and with one of these uh, currents cross the Wallace line uh, uh, possibly installs in Australia, Papua New Guinea, Andaman Islands and then passes on, on by the currents to Africa or this way but this is a stronger current and uh, it's less effort to hit on Madagascar So this is the Pacific currents. This these are really currents. Uh, this one uh, goes to Japan, which was one of the places where uh, D appears. It goes to the Wallace line, which is easy to cross with another current to Andaman and to Tibet. So Tibet could be provided. Uh, by this current or by this current that is rounding Indonesia which in the ice ages was Sundaland more or less the grey area you can add it, add it up with the Icelands you will see that uh, at some point we will speak about African Americans carrying uh, one of the haplogroups discussed here and there's something particular about Albert Perry, Perry. he's a North American, he is uh, United States and he is supposed for consensus is supposed to represent Adam uh, to represent uh, well Africa in some way because they connect Adam group A they connected to Africa and I would like to ask you to watch his uh, morphology and his skin uh, what I will claim at some point is that when they find certain haplogroups in African Americans that at least in some cases it's in fact um, Amerind I will come back at some point he is uh, born in slavery and apparently he was quite intelligent because was, he was uh, had to do his profession with geology or geography and um, well he has this Adam A haplogroup one of the oldest haplogroups which is quite well which is a paradigm for me that uh, consensus doesn't pay attention to I will claim that other African Americans that carry African DNA and root very early or Adam African DNA that they are white or at least uh, the skin color of amaranth of Amazon amaranth that's where we'll try to get there's a funny thing that C that comes before D is very present also in Japan I cannot see Andaman Islands and I, I don't really expect it but uh, Japan uh, is quite uh, well um, could be an indication because D is very strong in Japan as well uh, the same it's stronger in uh, Altai it's here 
And for the rest, it can be found about uh, Black Sea. This was C1A. This is C, so this is more than C1A. This is C. And you still see Japan, you still see, you see it's it's closer to Balkai Lake. And this must be uh, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Um, this is C, again, but here uh, Australia was included. It does not re represent C1A, and in this one, that is C in general, it doesn't appear because it doesn't present Australia. This one presents Australia, and you see it's very present in Australia, and Australia will come back quite a lot in consensus and scientists and also in my hypothesis. Um, Haplogroup DE, this is Wikipedia, Haplogroup DE. DE is unique, this is all Wikipedia, because it's distributed in several geographically distinct clusters. As far apart as Africa, uh, but also, uh, I'll point them out, Anamai Islands is in it, in D. This is D, this is not D E. That's very strange, such a, such a small island, and I think this is an important indication. And then E is common in Africa. So D is not common in Africa. E is common in Africa. And if Africa or out of Africa is A, B, C, D, E, it should be in Africa. So, at some point, I will point to the paradigm that black skin in Africa seems to com come out of white or neutral skin. And so we're talking about DE, eh? Haplogroup DE. So, in Japan and Tibet, as far as I know, has very little to do with black skin. There's other places that have to do at least something with black skin, that is Milanesia. And at least there is some minority ethnic group in Andaman Islands that is has black skin as well. So what I, the paradigm I want to point out that if E, e haplogroup E, Africans, would descend from D, then they descend from white or rather neutral skinned people. So in other videos you will see that R is, uh, according to consensus, is kind of white, it's not neutral. Amazon amaranths I call neutral because they are the origin and they are not really white and they are not really black. Uh, the, this is very interesting, uh, an alu polymorphism called yap and so DE represented. So DE and their subclades are YAP positive. They present this ALU. This mutation, because an ALU is a mutation, or less a mutation that always occurs in the same place. Or there's a, 
a certain pattern to it. So all other haplogroups, all of the world, they are YAP negative. Uh, this is very uh, important. This is about the age, I'm not too worried about that right now. This YAP insertion, uh, insertion, insertion, mutation was discovered long time ago because in this period this person, Hammer, published articles about it. And these articles state that YAP insertion originated in Asia. What I take from this is it's not from Africa. Of course, this claim uh, well, is, let's say, is not good for consensus. So you can expect that there's a lot of discussion and trying to prove that it's Africa or that it's Asian. That's what I mentioned in the beginning. So the haplogroups that I consider typical for Africa and that should become before D and E were YAP negative. That is like A and B don't have the Neanderthal fraction but they also don't have YAP negative. They don't have the YAP mutation. And then what is younger? Especially E is younger than D. It is YAP positive. You will see that this will uh, present several paradigms. And then again, this D was found in Asian lineage of Tibetans and Japanese. That's where we have the D, so it makes sense. Uh, what doesn't make sense is that A and B don't have it, and D and E have it. So they call it a mutation and I call it a hybridization but that's for other videos hybridization of a genome that comes from the Americas because well And this YAP mutation had already originated 141,000 years ago. And it comes from out of Africa. Uh, so, uh, well, th this is another paradigm because out of Africa should have taken place 50 to 80,000 years ago. Contemporary studies, so more recently, 2000, and these are in favor of it being out of Africa. And they think it's in East Africa, but I also think that East Africa, if it were African, it should come more from the center, and because East Africa is very much under pressure from Asia by the currents. You will see that in other videos. So if it were under pressure, well, it's a paradigm. And this defense of consensus requires the extinction of the ancestral YAP chromosome or mutation. 
to explain certain things to explain what I claim <laughs>